I was born in Erie and then moved to a really small town, like in the middle of like the, the forest, <laughs> basically. So when I was in like sixth or seventh grade, I moved back to Erie. So I was, even though it's kind of a really small city, it felt like a, like big to me. So, um, but you know, I was like kind of like typical product of like, you know, divorced family and stuff like that, and I was just generally angsty and pissed off all the time. Um, and, you know, I was really drawn kind of also typically to like skateboarding and through skateboarding and like Thrasher Magazine and like the friends I met through skating, like got turned on to a lot of punk bands. And, um, there was this a, a kid who I went to high, went to middle school with. Maybe it was sixth or seventh grade. So this is like I mean I, I wouldn't even try to think of the day the, the date because it was sort of so far before I got into hardcore. But he had an older brother that was into punk, and he he gave us like he would steal tapes from him. So that was kind of how I got into like bands like Exploited and. Um, a lot of like heavier punk that was kind of like almost like on the verge of like metal-ish. And I also had some good friends uh, that I met through skating who were into, uh, you know, bands like Slayer and like Anthrax and then they were getting into like, you know, bands like DRI. I mean, it, there was, there was like a local scene of like punk bands. Um, there were no hardcore bands. Um, so we would really like through the punk scene I got you know I got introduced to a lot of the hardcore bands through just reading Maximum Rock and Roll and like just through that kind of stuff and you know we we would just because of the unique location of Erie the geographics of it um, it was actually kind of a blessing because we were equal distance from Cleveland Pittsburgh and Buffalo and those were like you know compared to Erie were much bigger cities and that and that was also like they were big enough cities with like clubs and stuff like that where it was like a natural tour stop for bands. So we would really go to go to those places and then as like the kind of like eclectics of the Erie scene started started to kind of come together and we were like, you know, kind of like there would be a band here and there that would come through, but then when we kind of all, you know, a few of us just started bands, you know, I, I, I guess it must have been in like 88 that I started playing in a band. It was me, Roger Herbert. Um, he went up, he was in Brothers Keeper for a long time. And uh, the Rieger brothers, who were in an awesome metal band called Talon. And they were like kind of the best dudes to get into a band with because they were like really talented and like I was just like a kid and so it was kind of like to get chops playing with like really good musicians when you're not a musician at all was kind of awesome and an eye opener. But um, so what band? Uh, the Brothers Keeper's not around yet at this time. No, nah, this is like uh, my first band out of hand. <laughs> Um, then uh, I was in a couple other short-lived bands, and then eventually something approved, which was um, yeah the precursor to Brothers Keeper. But yeah, I mean, I just was like drawn to the fact that it was you know this weird kind of like on the fringe culture of, and community of like angsty, like aggressive stuff, but it had an aesthetic that, that was like kind of like purposeful. And that was what kind of set it apart at the time from like punk, which I, you know, was into because of the content and like the aggressiveness and stuff like that. But there was something about hardcore that when I, you know, when I heard it and it just like, it just meant, made more sense like in the long term. Like I felt like it had more of a like potential purpose. And uh, you know, just, so 
sort of traveling around, like even going to those cities that were far, you know, not that far away. It was like you would meet someone there and then they'd be like, oh, well, I came from Syracuse or I'm from Columbus, Ohio. And it just like started to sprawl. And I, I was growing up in Erie, like, and I really appreciate it because it was such a tight knit community. But I, I always just really wanted to like leave and like see what else was out there and like travel and meet people. I was really excited about the potential of like meeting these people with common interests. And, and that was really kind of what drove me to like start a band and, and like eventually tour and, and just like kind of was like this share this discovery of sorts. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as like starting a scene in Erie, like, I mean, I, I was there at the time, you know, and I, I worked really hard. I don't not at all take credit for anything like that because it was like a really like, it was re really like a true example of like a community of people who like, were like kind of faceless and just wanted to create something for, you know, for me it was just to give people something to do because there really wasn't anything to do. And, uh, you know, there was a big, like, there were, like, bands that would play, but no, it was mostly, like, 21 and up, and, like, you know, we couldn't even get into those shows because we were, like, 16 or 15, so, um, yeah, we just, like, found these weird places heard from all those other guys, like the main place at that time was the Continental Ballroom. I mean, I saw so many bands there, <laughs> I can't even count. I mean, you know, some of the first bands that we got to like come there that were bands that we like really liked were like Integrity and Face Value and Snapcase, like bands from like the region and stuff like that. But there was also like this kind of ongoing, like, you know, alternative like punk stuff going on as well. So there, you could see a lot of different kinds of bands in the same show. And because, you know, it's like right before like Brothers Keeper and stuff, there was like just the most random, eclectic bunch of people there. Like it, it just made no sense, but it was like the only thing to do so it was it was awesome and I think that that really had a lot to do with it um yeah and then by the time like things were going with Brothers Keeper I mean that that place was like I mean we would you know not up just us but the other bands like Disciple and like a lot of these you know newer bands from from Erie would play their be like just like mania, you know, like sweat dripping off the ceiling. And it was just, it was amazing. Um, so yeah, it just kind of became like a phenomenon in the, in the town and like eventually like it, I think like word would get around like that it was a, a valid place to play, you know? Which I, I kind of found like being in a band later, like a lot of times like the best shows were in these places that you wouldn't expect. Like, we, we would pretty much just exhaust the place. Um, I remember so, like, several times, like, getting dressed up and, like, putting on, like, nice, you know, Doc Martens and, like, tight pants, like, tighter pants and a tie and a nice coat and, like, go to meet these people from, like, um, just, like, wherever. Another, I guess, like, after that had, like, totally, Ended. We uh, we were doing shows at the the Perry Highway Hose Company, which was like a, just like a fire hall. Um, one of the first shows we had there was like it was packed and super awesome. These people just like they're just like regular ass people. They're not like expect. They think oh these kids are gonna put on like some bands. They think it's gonna be like just whatever. And we got like four hundred kids <laughs> show up. Um, so after that, like the first, the first one or two times we had shows there, there was like so many people like mobbed in there that like you know I could hear the people like 
one of the guys was like, oh, get these kids off my table, so I'm gonna fucking shoot somebody. Tell these kids I'll fucking shoot them. And like, it was just, they just weren't ready for it. But, I mean, another awesome thing, I mean, there was like almost never a fight or anything like, it was like crazy because I was, had been to, you know, shows in like Buffalo where I was like pretty sure that someone was going to die. <laughs> um, so, you know, here it was just like really like everyone kind of was involved and like everyone felt like they had a stake in it. Um, which is something that people talk about and like aspire to and act like it happens, but I feel like it really was like that, you know? Um, I remember we had this guy, Brian Monet, I think his name, yeah. His mom worked at for copies of the flyers and they would run them on a printing press and make like 5,000 flyers. So we would take these giant stacks and just leave them at like, you know, record den in the mall and like, four other places and like the next day they'd all be gone because people would just go and take them and like pass them out and, and it was awesome. So it was really just like a good, like everyone was really helping out. It's kind of like a collective of people. Oh. When I started Disciple, like it just, you know, they were an awesome band so they would open shows and like really soon after they were like, you know, they would be the band that played right before the out of town band and just like killing it. So, and then they, you know, soon were headlining shows and same thing, like hundreds of kids were coming and it was awesome. Um, it was super like, <laughs> it was super like um, love or hate, you know? Cause we, we didn't, we were just doing what we knew. Like, you know, like the first, the first time that I like, left the tri-state region was touring with Snapcase as a roadie and at which I was awful at. <laughs> I just slept and did stage dives. <laughs> um, but you know that those guys were like good friends of, of mine grow, like growing up and getting into hardcore and then, and they were like a big influence. But um you know uh, uh, my vocals were like you know, could definitely bum someone out really quick. But, um, you know, I was just like, I, I never, at, at that point, I was just doing what, what I liked and what we thought was cool and, like, weren't really, like, didn't have any kind of plan for what it was going to sound like. So, um, but we were, you know, we were touring at a time when not a ton of bands were touring. So, so we probably started in, like, 94. And then we played our last shows in like 2000 or 2001, but we were kind of we were kind of already like done. Like I had moved to New York, and and uh, <clears throat> we were do we did it while I was in New York. We recorded a record and did you you know two U.S. tours and a European tour in the U.K. Well, oh, geez. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it was like all my most formulative years, you know, I, I mean, I met people then that are still in my life today and, and it was really like a blueprint for, for everything, you know, I, <clears throat> I think through the music and the community, I got to, you know, I got to like see the world, you know, like at least a good chunk of it that I wouldn't have seen otherwise and also um, you know it was through that that I learned a, a lot about like social issues that like are still really important to me and, you know like I feel like I learned more from like stuff on tables at hardcore shows that I did in college or anything like that and like just the like world view experience of touring and like you know, that was like incredibly humbling, you know? And I think that's important. And also like, I, you know, I, I really like today, I, a lot of what I do every day for like a life, like a living is like the same stuff I did like in high school, like making shirts for bands and, uh, you know, album covers and stuff like that. So 
you know, if it wasn't for having been in, in bands and meeting other bands and being having the opportunity to do art for them, like I would, you know, I could be a totally different person. And that's that's something that I think of a lot, and why I I think I played in a band for so long was because I really just wanted to like share that experience and like you know eventually why <clears throat> the band I did after Brothers Keeper the AKs was like maybe more of like an intro to punk band because that I will I we often were discovering that you know we were the band that was introducing these like warp tour mall kids to like something else and I and I used to be like a kid at the mall with the skateboard and like if it wasn't for this like intricate path that I sort of stumbled upon, I think I could have maybe just ended up a totally different person and that's kind of like scary and awesome. I mean I live in Philadelphia now, I remember playing in Philly at like Stalag and the, and thinking it was like the craziest wretched shithole that I had ever seen and like couldn't believe that it was a thing and now like and now looking back I'm like you know that was like a chance for me to be like to experience that and like and I think it's amazing you know and now I live in Philadelphia which is crazy I mean that was like truly like again like on the fringe you know like they were just doing it and not giving a fuck you know <laughs> and I think that's amazing and, and you know it was like something to be like respected for sure I, I think it's awesome and you know and later when I would we would go to Europe and stuff and play in like these like basically like squats that were like functioning like huge awesome clubs like it's just it's just a crazy you know one of the reasons why we wanted to like get out so much and like show people that there was a scene where we were from and like you know when you know, again, now I live in Philadelphia, so it's different, but at, at that time, whenever we would be anywhere in the country and say we were from Pennsylvania, they're like, oh, that's awesome. Do you go to Philly? And I'm like, dude, I live like eight hours from Philadelphia, you know? Um, so I think that it's awesome. You know, there's like, there's a ton of great bands still, like, scattered all over the states. There are all over the state. There's tons of good bands in like Wilkes Fair and all that stuff and all that stuff, so, um, yeah, I think it's awesome. I, mean, I think it's a blessing and a curse because, you know, when I think people tend to, like, glorify, like, you know, before a little bit, like, because, because it felt different than, like, because it, it was, you needed to work harder for it, you know, like, I would order a 7-inch out of the back of a Maximum Rock and Roll and send, like, cash money in the mail and wait, like, four months for that shit to show up, you know? And, like, I would ride my BMX bike all the way to the other side of the city and, like, ride back with, like, the new Killing Time LP under my arm, like, and, like, you know, I, I remember that stuff, like, if... You know, I, if you named a record, I could probably, like, tell you the story about getting it because I, I remember all that stuff. And, like, and I think that, but at the same time, I mean, the internet, you can't hate on the internet. I mean, that shit makes stuff so much more accessible. And, like, it is, on one hand, easy, but, um, and that sort of takes maybe some of the appreciation out of it. But, I mean... The fact that that um, you know there's much more easy access to things, I think, is like is kind of you can't really can't really uh, say that's a bad thing. Or, I mean, dude, we were touring with fucking no cell phones and like no GPS. Like, I mean, that's like just like that. That's the kind of thing that I look back at and I'm like, that was crazy, you know, like I can't even drive like to the suburbs now, <laughs> fucking all that stuff, but um, yeah, now I, I totally hear what, what I, I, I feel you on that, but like, I mean, it's also like, 
so much easier to like keep in touch with people, and that's always like what was important to me is like meeting people and like making friends and like.